Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of my VATSIM tutorial series. In our last video, we went over how to install and set up vPilot and get connected to the network. Today, I'm going to show you how to get a IFR clearance and how to file a flight plan. So let's get started. Filing a flight plan is pretty simple. First, you're going to go to simbrief.com. You're going to have to make an account. I'm not going to go over that because it's, it's pretty basic. You're going to go to create a Navigraph account and you're going to make one. So once you've made an account, you can go back to this home screen and you're going to go to Dispatch and My Flight Plan. And you're going to click on New Flight. So let's plan a flight here from Los Angeles over to New York City. You're going to enter your aircraft type. So if I was flying an A320, I would do A320-200 or NEO-321. But we're going to plan this in a Boeing 737-700. Now that we have our route, which you can see over here on the map, so you can see the black line with the waypoints here, we can just do some more changes before we actually download it and import it into vPilot. So look over here, you can see like, you, um, you can change from kilograms to pounds. Usually if you're flying in the US, you'd probably want to use pounds, or if you're just American, you'd want to use pounds. Flight maps, you can do simple, type of flight, just keep that at scheduled. Alternates, you can have four different alternate airports if you wanted, but we'll just keep it at one. And then right here, you can change the actual route. So if you don't like the current one, you can do something like this. You can do something like this, something like this if you wanted to. But usually, you just want to go with the first one, because that's usually the quickest and the most efficient. Other than that, you're not need to worry about any of this. So you're going to click Generate. And you're going to click Flight Plan Downloads and you're going to look for vPilot and you're going to click download. This is the quickest and most efficient way to actually get your flight plan from Simbrief into vPilot. So you're going to download that, it's going to show up here, LEX to JFK, and you're going to open up vPilot, you're going to click on flight plan, and you're going to click load. You're going to go to downloads and click that VFP file and open. And as you can see, there it is. So um, the remarks you can actually get rid of the ones that Simbrief puts in there. Those aren't really important. Um, you're going to use the remarks for things like if you're new, you're going to be like, hey, I'm new, can you please read things slower? Anything that the controller might need to know. For example, if you were, um, if it was nighttime, real time, but if you were flying in daytime, you would do something like flying in daylight. And then the controller will be able to see this and recognize that you're flying in daylight. Or if you're not flying in live weather, you can say like, flying with 60 knot crosswind or something. Um, but other than that, the rest of this should be planned, such as your departure time, your fuel available, your cruising speed, altitude, and then all your alternates. So this is a really easy way to do this. And then there are three things up here that I do want to go over, such as IFR or VFR. R um, this tutorial is strictly IFR. We're not going to be doing VFR or any of these other ones. So you're going to keep that at IFR. And then heavy aircraft, that is if your aircraft is over 300,000 pounds. So you can add that and then your call sign, instead of being like UPS 705, you'll be UPS 705 heavy. And then you have equipment suffix. If you're flying an airliner, you're, you're pretty much always going to want to keep that at L. And then once you do that, you'll click file flight plan. You do have to be connected to the network, which I am not. But that is actually how you get your flight plan filed. And I will actually go over how to get an IFR clearance and what an IFR clearance is. An IFR clearance is a clearance that you get to your destination airport. So if I was flying to Boston, I would ask for an IFR clearance to Boston. It's pretty simple to actually ask for one, but actually getting one and understanding what everything means is a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to go over that. There are five things that you're going to get when you get an IFR clearance. Number one, you're going to get cleared to your airport. United 1660 Savannah clearance. I've got you cleared to Toronto Pearson International Airport. Number two, you're going to get a departure and a transition. Three and one might departure squawk 5673. Three, you're going to get an, an initial altitude, which is going to be the altitude that you're going to climb to when you leave, and then they will clear it up to a higher altitude. Maintain 3,000, expect... The most important part here comes with climb via SID or climb and maintain. Those are two different things. So climb via SID. So if you look at like a regular SID chart, 
you'll see that there are altitudes at each waypoint that you should be at. You're going to climb to those altitudes and not go above or below them. You're going to climb to those altitudes all the way through until you're actually out of the departure. Then they will clear you to your cruising altitude. They'll usually say something like 5 or 10 minutes after departure. Next flight level 380, 10 minutes after departure. And then they'll give you a departure frequency. Uh, departure frequency 125.3. And they will give you a squawk, which is your transponder code that you put into your transponder. Squawk 1613. So I recommend actually having a notebook or something on hand, because you're going to have to write down and remember this, because you're going to have to read every single thing back. But there is one option for people who don't want to read it back, and that is a PDC. You've seen it in a couple of my videos. It is just a message sent to you. It has all of the things I've gone over, such as cruising altitude, departure, route. It has all of that, except it's just in a text format. And you don't actually have to read it back. You don't have to say, we got the PDC. You don't have to acknowledge any of that. You also can request to have a PDC. You can just be like, hey, um, requesting IFR clearance, but can you get a PDC? And the controller will most likely give you a PDC. So when you're getting a clearance, you're going to be talking to the clearance delivery controller. You might end up actually getting an IFR clearance from ground, tower, approach, or center. It can be any single one of these controllers because of how VATSIM works. So if ground is online but clearance delivery is not online, then you will contact ground for your clearance. But if ground isn't online, then you'll contact tower. If tower isn't online, then you'll contact departure, and if not, then you'll have to contact the center controller for an IFR clearance. And with that, this is what an IFR clearance sounds like. Savannah delivery, United 1660, requesting IFR to Toronto. United 1660, Savannah clearance. Good evening. I've got you cleared to Toronto Pearson International Airport um, as filed. Uh, maintain 3000, expect flight level 380, 10 minutes after departure. Uh, departure frequency 125.3, squawk 1613. United 1660 is cleared to the Toronto Pearson International Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 3000 feet. Expect flight, fl flight level 380, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 125.3 and squawk 1613. 1660, read back is correct. Contact ground and ready to taxi 121.9. Copy will contact ground and ready for taxi United 1660. And that is going to wrap up this tutorial. Um, part 3 will be on pushback and taxi to a departure runway. Um, if you have any questions on IFR clearances, leave them in the comments section and I will answer them. If you have any questions about the first part as well, installation and setup, please leave those here as well and I will get to those as well. And that's going to be the end of this tutorial, so see you in part 3. Las Vegas is about to America 277. We're having a problem with the landing gear today. It's not coming up. 277 Las Vegas, bro. Do you mean it's not coming up? Yeah, it's not coming up. I meant the parts, my bad.